So moving on to condensers, starting with the waste heat boiler. It cools the reaction furnace temperature down to about 350 degrees Celsius and produces high pressure steam. Then the inner stage condensers cool the processed gas headed to the next catalytic stage and condense the produced sulfur vapor into a liquid. And these do low pressure steam generation, typically around 50 PSI. And that steam is used for heat tracing. And then the final condenser, we give a recommended optimal temperature of 125 degrees Celsius. And this will minimize the sulfur vapor carryover to the thermal incinerator or tailgas treating unit. The condensers lead into sewer type liquid sulfur rundowns and these process uh, prevent the process gas from blowing to the sulfur pit or to atmosphere. To do this the sulfur la the seal legs must be deep enough to ensure that the column head pressure of the liquid sulfur is greater than the maximum combustion air blower discharge pressure. And these seal legs and rundowns must be steam jacketed or they will plug up. So the produced low pressure steam is what sets the condenser temperature. Therefore it's common that the recommended temperatures are impossible to achieve due to the low pressure steam requirements by the utilities unit. Also some condensers are all in the same shell which limits the amount of temperature adjustments that can be made. Therefore oftentimes the optimal temperatures are simply not realistic. This is less of an issue for interstage condensers but we would hope that the final condenser above all can achieve the optimal temperature of 125 degrees Celsius. And typically it must be independent to achieve that temperature. The most important factor in designing sulfur condensers is the velocity of the process stream. Capacity evaluations by way of VMG simulation software can identify limitations like this and the optimal mass velocity through the condenser process tubes. Now, if velocities are too low, sulfur fogging can occur, and if they're too high, sulfur reentrainment can occur, and both those can lead to carryover. These capacity evaluations should be up to date with the process parameters, and they're essential when operating at high turndown or if you're expecting to in the future. So, on to reheat methods. Reheaters increase the process gas temperature to avoid condensation of produced sulfur in the converters. Process gas leaves the condenser at the sulfur dew point temperature, and that temperature must be increased to bring the Klaus reaction into the gas phase in the converters. Listed here are the types of indirect and direct fired reheaters. And keep in mind that we're trying to maintain that optimum 2 to 1 ratio throughout the entire SRU. So direct fired reheaters have a simplified ratio control uh, and temperature set point. They're very flexible in turn down conditions. However, they continuously add trace oxygen to the downstream converter, which can lead to sulfation, which we'll discuss further on. With DFRs, it's important to regularly review the BMS, that's the burner management system, to keep excess O2 to the converters at a minimum and prevent any soot deposition. Now, indirect reheaters heat the process gas without changing its composition. Therefore, there's no effect on overall recovery efficiency from added sulfur species. They are, however, often the most expensive reheat method. And optimizing indirect reheaters just includes regular calibration of the instruments and just preventative maintenance, really. And there's also hot gas bypasses, where a portion of the furnace outlet goes straight to the first converter. And sulfur vapor is a product of the equilibrium limited Klaus reaction, therefore the added vapor from the hot gas bypass does decrease the full potential of the Klaus reaction in that first converter. So optimized feed stream quality and reaction furnace operation will lead to an optimized hot gas bypass as a reheat method. And then finally, replacing DFRs with indirect reheaters would be an optimization of the SRU's reheat method. Ensure the reheater and its instrumentation are checked and maintained regularly to prevent costly repairs and process upsets or downtime.